did the West Ham owners have any choice, do you think, really, on this one? Well, they've certainly had a choice, um, partly because this is a strange one. Uh, he was popular with the fans. He was popular with the players, very popular with the media, very amusing man to have in the press room. I always came out with something different. A real gentleman, very polite, always answered the questions. Clearly nice had man. passion. <laughs> very nice man. Had <laughs> a clear Catholic passion. Man, yeah. Clear passion for the club. You know, he's not every manager these days has ever played before, certainly not for the club that they go on to manage. So he had a lot going for him. But if you are the owners and you keep applying ultimatums and deadlines, you've got... Last season he had six games and he just scraped through with a win in the sixth game, otherwise he would have got the bullet then. This season it's been a variety of deadlines and he indicated himself if there weren't real signs of some sort of consolidation in the Liverpool game, he would probably be out. And it was such a poor performance um, in lots of ways. Defensively, they looked like they hadn't been coached properly or hadn't watched any tapes of Liverpool. It, 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 it looked like they were trying the players, perhaps, but it was a bit of a mishmash. And afterwards, he had the look of a man who knew whatever it was I hoped would happen, it didn't happen. And the, he said, you know, the, the owners will do what they have to do. So maybe it took 12 hours longer than we thought, but... If you, if, you, if you really think you're hovering above the relegation zone and you're at the big stadium where you need to make sure you stay there, otherwise you'd be rattling around in the Championship, the, that's the, not going to work. You've got to do something. They've been ruthless. They're, real, they're going with their, their, their head and not their heart. If they, had the, if they went with their heart, they would have kept him because he's a legend at the club. And they've gone with the, f the business decision, you know, between the three of them, Gold, Sullivan and Karen Brady, that if they didn't change now, you know, they could be under severe pressure and and struggle to, to get out of the relegation bit. But um, Moyes coming in, I think, is a fantastic appointment. Well, um, well on Milic, first of all, do you agree that they look like a side that, that wasn't coached? They look, they look not the team that from, from past. You know, they look disjointed. You know, the defence was all over the place. They spent a lot of money in the summer, bringing Joe Hart on big wages from Man City. Zabaleta come in. Um, Font probably not played to the level he could have from when he was at Southampton. Arnautovic has, has been a bit up and down. Um, Hernandez has been the same. So from that point of view, it's been, been a difficult situation for them. But um, they've got good players. And um, Slavan's obviously taken the bullet because he was in charge of it. And, um, you know, well, I think... Yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. We, we played 1-3-0 uh, at um, the Olympic Stadium. And um, in his demeanour, he, he seemed broken. And it was hard watching. Yeah. Um, I grew up as a West Ham fan. My dad played for West Ham. It's a very special club. Once you play for the club, and Slavin was a legend of the football club. And I think they were trying to help him to give him more time. Yeah. And the longer it went on, the more raggedy the performances got, the more disjointed that the performances got. And it got to a point where I feel that they had to make a change. And saying that, it's going to be very interesting to see how David Moyes yeah. gets on. Because of the culture of the football club, they expect you to be playing expressive football, passionate football. It's a very passionate following, and if David Moyes has to embrace that and, and take it on, it's a fantastic opportunity for him, and he needs to make the most I of it. I think he'll learn from his past experiences. Sunderland, Sociedad, even the Man United job. I know he's going to get criticised for that, but, um, you know, I felt he was harshly done by at Man United, you know. Do you, do you think that's affected him, that, that whole experience at Manchester United's affected his confidence in himself? It as has, manager? but... I have lucky enough to, to meet him a couple of times over that past couple of years and recently, only his last Wednesday, I met him at a game, pressing against Aston Villa, he was in the telly and, you know, he had a real buzz about him, you know, he was excited, um, looked fresh, ready to go and he knows that it's a big challenge for him but, you know, what, an awful, what a wonderful opportunity. You know, it really seems West like he's Ham. landed on his feet. The fans don't seem terribly impressed, Alison. What's your reaction to that? Well, what I would say is... The owners took over seven years ago with a seven-year plan to reach Champions League football and we are now at the stage, seven years on, where they are appointing an interim manager to keep them out of the Championship. Who else would they go for? But the fact that it's interim... Yes, but... I, th I think that speaks volumes for what they need from Because the ship's... The, the boat's been rocked. It's, it's, in, it's not in a great position. Club, basically, is confidence-wise, is low. The players are low. And they need somebody to come in and stay the ship. Sam's been there before. He's obviously out of work. Who else do they turn to? There's no probably anybody that knows the league I as good as Moyes. He's got that experience in the Premier League. So I think that's why it's a good appointment. Let's get to the end of the season. I know it's 
still another 20 odd games or 30 games to go, whatever it is, it's it's about now they need to steady the ship, stop the rot and build to the to the end of the season and then go from there. I, th I think you're right, Chai. Also, the, the structure of the league, if you look now, you've got a top six and you've got a bottom 14. And it, that's just the way the league's gone yeah, at the yeah. moment. And I don't think anyone can even argue with that at the moment. Look at the points difference. And West Ham now 17th, they're on nine points. We at Brighton have in eighth, we're on 15 points. It's a six-point gap. And we're talking about crisis. And the reason we're talking about crisis is because the be all and end all for a Premier League club outside of that top six is to stay in the Premier League. And you see Everton linked with Allardyce, a solid appointment, someone who you know is experienced, who's going to keep you in the league. And the same with David Moyes. He, he didn't do it at Sunderland, but he built He's a got club a better at Everton. Squad now at West Ham. He's got better players at Everton. And one thing he is in, in all of the teams that he, he tries to, to make sure they're right defensively. He tries to make sure that his team are organised. And seeing the game that we played against West Ham, they, in terms of the defensive organisation, the first goal is a set piece. Uh, we score on a counter attack. Liverpool's goal on, on the weekend was they're set up from a corner and they score within 13 seconds going on the other end of the pitch. They're organisational things that David Moyes is very good at and it could be a very good fit for, for do you West think, Ham. Do you think West Ham need Moyes more than Moyes needs West Ham, though? I think no, it's about both. Both. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for him. After what happened at Sunderland, I think he's, he has landed on his feet. It's a massive club and it's a club full of potential as well. You look at the squad there, the likes of Hernandez and Carroll up front, the fact that uh, Michael Antonio has been performing really well the last couple of years, they've got some really good players there. They haven't gelled as a team. And if one thing we, we can say about David Moyes in his career, he's all about the functionality of his teams. He built an Everton team for years, most one of the most difficult teams in the Premier League to play against. And that wasn't with star players, but they all knew their jobs. And that's something that they'll, have, they'll get at West Ham. It seems that uh, this is an appointment um, which we should learn more about tomorrow until the end of the season. Now, if, if you're in that dressing room, Charlie, and you're getting a manager who was very much being talked about as an interim, what impact would that have on the players? Well, as a player, I think you've got to deal with here and now. And at the end of the day, he's in charge. Your future you know, could change next summer because he might get the job. He might, there might be a, a, a clause in the contract saying if you keep us up or... You finish in the next position, you, you will get the job. We're guaranteed to your contract, three year contract. So I think every player in that dressing room, the ones that have not been playing, will get a fresh start. But also the ones that are there will be fighting for new contracts. Also, it'll be important that, that you know, they fight for the club because nobody wants to get relegated. Um, and they're fighting for the future with or without David Moyes. But they've got to be thinking that David Moyes is going to get it in the longer term and, and they've got to impress him. I thought this was interesting, reading this in The Guardian a um, couple of weeks ago. I'll read it to you. Seeing Bilic standing alone with his own fans baying for his blood made me shiver at the prospect of that being me one day. <laughs> Do I really want to expose myself to the pain, stress and media scrutiny a manager has to accept as part of the job? Do you recognise those words? Oh, he must have been some very intelligent to write that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to put yourself in that situation, do you? You want to yeah. be a Premier League manager? One day, one day. So it's an ambition of mine. Uh, my dad was a manager and I've been brought up in football and I think you do have to be a little bit crazy to do the job. Um, seeing Slavin that day and credit to him after that game uh, I wrote about in the column. He's obviously under all types of pressure. Lost 3-0 at home to a team he's expected to beat. His job's on the line. He's waiting outside our away dressing room congratulating us on the performance. And I think him as a person, he seems an honest, he seems, hum he seems humble. Even the, the interview he gave today in the car, how many managers after they're fired sit in the car and, have an, and do an interview like he did today. And I think that speaks volumes for him. And I think he'll go away from this period at West Ham, refreshed, learn a lot of lessons about his career. So what do you think, Liam, when you, when, you, know, you, you harbour those ambitions yourself, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but then you, you see the prospect of, of David Moyes, a very experienced manager, um, being the front-runner for West Ham, Sam Allardyce, a very experienced manager, now the hot favourite to be the Everton boss. Yeah. What, what sort of impression does that give you? I think it's very interesting. I think especially with the ages of managers in the Premier League, I think it says a lot. We are speaking about there being a bottom 14 because the money in the Premier League is so big. We just got promoted at Brighton. It's changed not just the football club, it's changed the community. It's uh, increased the economy around the area of the, of the club. Being a Premier League club is everything. And if you're on board, you're going to have to be a brave person to appoint someone with, uh, with less experience than a David Moyes or a Sam Allardyce. I but think they're the two at the moment out of a job that know the league better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that what it's about? Just knowing the well, league? Well, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I can, but I, can... I think, can you bring in a foreign coach? Like Marco Silva? Yeah, but Marco but, but Silva... But he's already experienced with Hull. 
but you know, you know but we talked about experience. experience. Yeah, he but, came in, was he? No, but, but can you we, get him out his contract at Watford now because he'd be on a good? No, but I'm talking about the, him as a theoretical name, yeah. as somebody they yeah. whole took a gamble. If on. we look at Pochettino, who now I respect, I think his Tottenham team are absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Where did he get his first job? He was he was at Espanyol, a La Liga side. Yeah. He was assistant manager of the ladies' team at Espanyol. Gets a chance, a young coach with different ideas, and you look at his career now. Same with Klopp. Where did he start? He started as a player, moved yeah, into it's, coaching, it's where and, they, and it's had where a they've come from level. at that time to where they are. You know, Pochettino come from Southampton, done an excellent job. They deserve these move to Tottenham. Jurgen Klopp's come from Dortmund. You know, one of the biggest clubs in Germany. Yeah, but, they've they've been given an opportunity from that, but. The you start know, point of their careers, though, is what yeah, I'm saying. Is yeah, if but it's, Premier League, your, last are... it's like your last job. You're only where your last job is. And, and these, Klopp was at Dortmund. Um, but if he know. wouldn't have been at Dortmund, if he hadn't have been appointed at Mainz to begin with, and what I'm yeah, saying is we look start, at you start somewhere, Silver, yeah. We look at Marco Silva, and again, all of his teams, so organised, coached really well, spoke to a lot of lads at Hull about him. They loved him, yeah. loved his coaching. But he started at a top league in Portugal, went straight from being a player as a young coach into, into management. Mm -hmm. I don't see that progression in, in England anymore. I don't see where the new ideas are, where the bright ideas are. We, we seem to always refer to the old safe school. option. Yeah. And there's nothing and wrong with And even in that. the lower leagues in, in England, exactly. it's, it's the but same roundabout for, if you for keep, managers. If you keep, Einstein said, if you keep making a, doing the same things, it's a version of insanity. Yeah. And we can't expect managers who have had unbelievable jobs, had done fantastic jobs in years gone by, by to come with new ideas and fresh ideas. And Germany at the moment is... We, everybody's talking about German football, yeah. but the ages of coaches there are a lot younger mm -hmm. than they are in the English league. Average age is five years lower in the five years lower. The but is that? That's and the, I'm not is, saying is that's that a guarantee. Is that the success. onus? Is that, the, is that because? Do we have to have more imagination then? I think maybe we do. I think the the owners have to to broaden the horizon. But financially, yeah. it's a massive hit. Premier the League losing the, the Premier League is. It's the, it's the money. That's what it comes down to. It's the money. If Everton got relegated or a West Ham got relegated in the Olympic Stadium, it'd be a crisis. Yeah. It'd be massive, especially with the amount of money Everton spent in the summer.